are back on the Zero Hour. I am Richard R.J. Escow, and we broadcast, as you may know, from Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, where this week the entire subway system, the metro, was shut down for 29 hours because they found some defective wires, some had caught fire, and uh, they realized that these were defects similar to those that actually caused uh, a, fatali- a fatality last year. So the response was to shut the entire system down for 29 hours, searching for uh, additional life-threatening defects of this kind. And they did, in fact, find severe cable damage in three sections of the system. Now, what does this mean if anything, in a broader sense, uh, that the nation's capital, that the transit system, primary transit system of the nation's capital was shut down unexpectedly for 29 hours. Uh, a, a writer for the Washington Post, the architecture writer, Philip Kennicott, did a great job uh, expressing some thoughts I had. In fact, candidly, a better job than I would have done. He said, we caused the metro shutdown when we decided to let our cities decay. That is the headline of his piece. And before you accuse me of reaching too, or Philip Kennicott, of reaching too far for a metaphor, consider this. Uh, There was a time in the 1960s, during the time when Washington, as it is currently exists was envisioned under the presidency of Lyndon Johnson when we weren't afraid to think big. So this city not only envisioned a metro system and the federal government envisioned the system for it because this has not been an independent city, uh, not only was it that ambitious a program uh, decided upon and enacted upon, that of creating an underground transit system, but one of the express purposes or goals of the metro system when it was built was to make it beautiful. Can you imagine in today's political climate a massive infrastructure project that is not only expected to be functional, but is also expected to be beautiful? Frankly, these days, I'd settle for an infrastructure project that was merely functional, but we can't even get that through our political process. The American Society of Civil Engineers tells us that we need $3.6 trillion in infrastructure investment just to keep our current systems going, and we're not willing to do it. Bernie Sanders has proposed a trillion dollars. That's considered high. Hillary Clinton has proposed even less than President Obama and the 200s and billions. It's not enough, folks. We need more.